Hey Tom, if you are ever in a well, ring my bell. I have no idea what that means. Think I love Lucy? Friendship? Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, welcome everyone to No Two Gays About It, the show for the over 50 gay male, all about the over 50 gay male, and hosted by two well over 50 gay men. Hello, I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And this season we've been talking all about companionships that the over 50 gay men find themselves in or are seeking out, and today we are going to discuss friendships. Can we truly find, make, and keep real friendships, especially as we're aging? We're going to discuss what actually is a friendship, and are there specific types within the gay community? We'll also delve into why cultivating and maintaining friendships can be rather difficult for a lot of guys our age. And more importantly, we're going to discuss why friendships are really important to those of us as we're aging. Let's talk friends. So I know I have my definition of what friends are and what different types of friendships represent for me. Um, What are your thoughts? How do you define it? Well, there are so many different types of friends. It's like asking, you know, what is the color blue? You know, there are millions of types of blues, just as there are millions of types of friends, all different levels. If you were to look it up in the dictionary, which I have, um, the definition of a friend is a person whom one knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection typically exclusive of sexual or family relations, people who have common beliefs and values, and often a friend is someone you trust and enjoy being around. So do you enjoy being around all of your friends? It depends on the day and my mood, but I would say 90% of the time, yes. Okay. Well, what about their mood and their day? Doesn't that matter too? Oh, I'm assuming that it does. Absolutely. Sure, I mean, yeah. of course. You know, if you're having a, I, I, I'm, I'm funny. If I'm having a crappy day, I tend to isolate because I know me, um, and so it's best if I go into my cave and just be alone. So, um, yeah. But also, like, if you know you're a good friend of mine, then I would allow you to have that. But if you're just say like a social friend, I'm not going to give you the leeway to be you know, an asshole or a, a jerk or whatever, right? Um, oh, I would hope so, not, yeah. Right. So let's talk about that. What are social friends for you? What is a social friend? Um, social friends for me are people who I know in an um, environment like a bar or on a tennis court or um, a party um, or an event and who I yeah. see occasionally. Um and, you know, you click when you're in the, in the environment and then everybody goes off to their separate lives. So, um, how about yeah, you? What is, how do you, well, what's your social? Cause we live in very different worlds. So, right. But, you know, the same thing. A social friend is someone you see at an event, at a dinner, at a whatever it is, something out socially. But the way you said that, that, you know, the event's over and you walk, you go your own way. Sometimes that really kind of hurts, you know, when you, you're at, an event or a party or a dinner party and you're clicking with somebody and you're, you know, you just get each other, right? And you're having fun and it, you're laughing and and you think like, okay, this is going to be my new friend and hey, let's meet for lunch or lunch, whatever, we'll make plans. But that never happens and they, you never see that person until you see them at the next social event and right away they're your best friend again. And I'm always like, well, wait a minute. Um, you only want to be friends with me, like, socially? Okay. I don't know. It, it seems seems kind of odd to me. Um, uh, yeah, maybe, again, it's, maybe it's because of the environment that I was in for so long um, in West Hollywood managing a bar, that that was such a big part of my life. I can absolutely understand someone who w- wasn't in that area, uh, you know, so much how... You know, you meet somebody and you click and you're like, oh, we have a connection. Let's go do lunch. And then all of a sudden they're not there. Right. I I could see how that would sort of chip away (laughs) at your willingness to do that again in a social environment. So, yeah, that's a a tough one. 
or at your own self-esteem friend whatever ego um but you mentioned something else that you know that you have friends that you know from the tennis courts well that's another completely different type of friend that especially in our gay community those um shared uh activity friends like you have your tennis friends or uh people on a softball league have their softball friends you know things that you do together um Correct. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, it's funny how, for me, that those those friendships exist inside of those bubbles. Um, right. Like you were saying, I, I really never thought about it the way you put it. Um, that if you don't have a lot of social activity, and then when you do connect with somebody, that there would be a little bit of a, well, what was what just what just happened? I thought we clicked, and m- maybe right. taking it a little harder than um, than I would. Um, yeah, I never thought about it that way, but I totally, I totally get it. Well, have you ever um, like met a friend at your shared activity, like your tennis court, and you're like, "Hey, hey, buddy, let's you know get together," and then you get together outside of the activity, and you're like, "Oh yeah, I don't really like this person." Ever um, happen? F- fortunately for me, no, because you know me, I'm I, I'm very closed off until that moment that I'm not, and then the door is flung open. So I tend to be guarded and don't necessarily open myself up immediately to say to somebody, oh, let's do lunch tomorrow, because that, that's just not me. I like to get a feel for somebody over a period of time before I would extend myself like that. Like There were people okay. who I knew in the context of a bar environment for years before I would actually say to them, because I would see them once or twice a week, um, hey, you know, we're talking about movies. You want to go grab a movie? Um, and then a friendship develops from there. But for me, I'm way more guarded than I think you are in, in, in situations like that. So, you know, it just goes okay. to show you that, you know, two people who, like you and I, who are friends, have such different experiences on how we cultivate and maintain friendships. Right. All right. So give me another type of friend that you find within our gay community. Um, I'm going to go to the top of the food chain, and that is friends who I would lay down my life for, and who, if they called me at three o'clock in the morning and needed a kidney, I would drive to the hospital. Okay, so question, uh, because we are talking about being over 50, and in most people's lives, those are the friends that you made when you were younger, whether you know in your childhood or everybody who went to college you know, had that bond with those people that they went to college with and they're still friends with, or the first time you move out of your home and you're, you have that first group, do you find that you have made friends over the age of, you know, since you've been over 50, um, new friends that you would lay down for? Um, lay down your life for, not lay down. I don't mean that. Yes, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a believer in friends with benefits, so I would not lie down for any of my friends. I don't want to see okay. them naked. Um, right. But oddly enough, I am experiencing some grief and some loss from a friend who just moved from Palm Springs to Ohio, who I met a year ago. And it was okay. one of those rare instances where from the very second we met, we clicked like we knew each other our entire lives. And Great. So let me ask you, where did you meet him? At a restaurant. It was a group of guys um, from bowling who we took a Friday off of bowling and we went out to a restaurant. And I'd seen him on the lanes before and we were always very friendly. And, you know, so th- it was that superficial friend. <laughs> I, I don't want to use that word. It was that um, less, it was not as deep of a friendship. Um, because it was very social. And then at this restaurant, we just, for like 45 minutes before we sat, we just had this conversation where it just opened the door. And then from that moment on, I swear to God, I haven't, I haven't giggled and laughed in the presence of somebody like the two of us did. We were kind of like awesome. <laughs> little, little kids. Um, and yeah. over a year, we got really tight. And then I said this to him, we went uh, out to dinner before he left. And I was like, Bitch, it took me a year to find somebody in Palm Springs who I felt this close to, and you're leaving me. Um, so I say, yes, it can happen over 50. You just have to 
I think, open the door and let down your guard. And right there, you just kind of proved two of our types of friends that we've been talking about. First, it was a shared activity because you met him bowling, and then you was out to dinner, so it was a social friend. Even though he has moved on and you that friendship is not physical anymore, are you going to continue a long-distant friendship? Because that's a another whole type of friend that's out there. With Without a doubt, I think... He's a friend I'll have my, I don't, I'm not going to say a thing. He's a friend I'll have the rest of my life. Yeah. And uh, especially after, you know, COVID and everyone was just connecting over Zoom or, you know, that still is a way that people are finding connections, especially it, as we're aging, the aging community who can't get out, can't go bowling, can't, you know, really be as active as they used to. So they are really connecting over online friendships. Um, and so you think that that can, do you think that's a thing that can actually work? Oh, I, I do. And, you know, I have um, a couple of friends in New Jersey who I may not speak to for six months, but then when either either of us make the phone call, it's like no time has passed. And you know right. that there's that security and that warmth of that friendship it's changed it's morphed into something different because you don't you don't have the physical proximity that you used to but it doesn't take away from that feeling one especially um who if i called him tonight and said that i needed something or vice versa you know i would be on the next plane um because that's how our friendship right. is cool and you, I'm assuming you have that too with people who you sort of, I want to say, grew up with, right? And when you were in your 20s and 30s. Yeah, I have a lot of long distance friends. Uh, my closest friend lives in New York City, you know, the whole time I lived in LA. So yeah, um, I, I understand that. But that's, we became friends when we were 20, you know, and now I'm just wondering, like, can, can you really find that deep, close friendship after the age of 50, especially as we mentioned earlier, you mentioned this, that a lot of people, they have, they're closed off to new friends. It's like, I got my friend group. I don't want anyone else in here, you know? Yeah, and that's, so that, that's, that's the, my... That's the point I wanted, well, I wanted to make. I think we have to check ourselves in those situations too. Is, it, is there some resistance on our part? Um, because we do have our tight circle of friends and we're satisfied with that, that maybe as we get older, we don't push ourselves to allow somebody new in because, you know, we get a little cynical and a little bit more guarded. It's funny thinking on this friendship that I made here in Palm Springs, I have to say that I'm checking myself because I know that was the truth for me, that I probably was more guarded and I have to take responsibility for not opening the door as wide as I should have or would have when I was younger. Okay, cool. All right. Well, let's, let's leave our type of friendships behind and let's move on to, because this is kind of a natural progression into this, is... Why cultivating and maintaining friendships can be really difficult, especially as we're aging in this gay community. And you said, you know, it, we have to look at ourselves. We have to see what what is it wh that we're resisting or whatever. And bottom line, friendships are a lot of work, a lot of work, right? Um, Without a doubt. You have to put in as much as you're expecting. Because the, it is that, a friendship is a relationship. It is it, definitely. It is, it's a relationship, and it requires as much nurturing and care and persistence as if you were getting married, you know, and having a physical relationship with somebody. Right. That, that friendships require that much work as well, and especially at our age, um, you know. My husband and I, too, moved to a new city recently, and I am putting myself out there as much as I can. You know, I am trying to uh, find new friends, trying to connect with people, and it is really a, a difficult thing. Sure, I would rather stay home, on the couch, watching television, eating, but, you know, I'm like, no, friendships are important, so I'm need to get out there and first thing is put myself out there to either be accepted or you know tossed to the curb it's tough right uh, it's 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 such a challenge as we get older um you know i think it and for a lot of us single guys it sort of mirrors our challenge with 
having an intimate relationship. Um, because there are walls that have gone up. There are doors that you might not want to open as far as you would have 20 years ago. Um, and I, again, I think if, if we regularly check ourselves on what our responsibility is, um, then I think it may help us cultivate deeper and more meaningful relationships as we age. Friendships, not only are they a lot of work, but they're, they're really delicate as well. You know, um, and we have to know that all friendships don't last forever. Right. Like, have we you, know have, this. Have like, you ever heard this um, expression, a reason, a season, or a lifetime, when referring no, to explain friendships? explain that to me. Explain it to me. It's been around forever. Um, I've heard it a million times during the course of my life. And I remember when I first heard it, I was like, what the hell does that mean? Because um, in... In my head, I had a very specific idea of what friendship was, and I wasn't giving up any ground. When I had to look at that in a deeper level, because like you, I was getting hurt by people who I thought wanted to be my friends, but then all of a sudden were AWOL. Um, and then the, it made more sense to me. A reason is somebody who comes into your life, and they're there to teach you something, and then they move on. It doesn't mean that you'll never see each other. It just means that that important part of the relationship has changed into something else. And then a season is people who, let's say you work with for a decade and you're really tight and you're really close friends. And you know how you always say to somebody, let's keep in touch. Let's, you know, or if you're working on a film project or a play or something um, it, and you're like, you're so tight and you really do think this is going to, you know, you're going to be friends forever. But then for, you know, we, we grow apart. And that's the season. And then the lifetime are those people who, if we're lucky enough, um, right. that you trust with everything that you are. Your heart is literally in their hands. Right. I, I definitely, that whole season part, um, work friends. My husband has always been in the corporate world, and I have not been. And he will be at a, a job for, I don't know, 15 years. And we know these people that he works with and we're so go out socially. We travel with them, you know, business travel. Then he changes jobs. And, it, and I was like, well, what happened to, you know, Joe Schmo? He's like, oh, I don't know. He's fine. Like, oh, you, you just move. Like, I saw that with my father as well, that like the work friends are are so important to you when you're in that job, but then they just move on. And I guess it's just me being a sensitive soul that I am. I'm like, well, well what about, like, we're, aren't they going to be our friends anymore? Like, okay, I, I guess we move on. So that, that season is over. Yeah. Considering we were in the same business, did you ever experience that when you were doing a play or you were working on a TV series or you were, you know, working yeah, on whatever project definitely. it was <clears throat> and you're like, oh my God, we're so tight. This is awesome. And then yeah, for whatever uh, reason, you don't, you know, your life goes in a different it's it's it is like a change of a season you have no control over it but when, man when right. you're in when you're in spring and you're enjoying everything blooming and it's just beautiful and wonderful but then you know after spring comes summer and that i i think that's another thing we have to allow to be okay that um to acknowledge that and check ourselves with that either and not taking it personally that right it just it's just the way life is it's a river flowing and there are different tributaries and different streams that run off of it and each one is valuable in in those moments but sometimes you just you got to go with it you know it's a it's right. it's a weird thing uh, we have the most amazing uh people that watch us on youtube and listen to us um and we get so many really great comments and a lot of things have been about their friendships and how people our age and older are kind of done with a lot of their friendships and they're just moving on and um again yes i'm a very sensitive soul and an end of a friendship is always a very sad thing for me but i do realize that there are a lot of reasons why we do need to end friend friendships and i also understand that there are reasons why friends and friendships with us and we have to accept that you know that people change over time we're not always the same um some people there are toxic friends we all have toxic friends that you just 
it's best to just not be around them. But how do you deal with, uh, I mean, we've just heard about you and this friend of yours who moved away, but like you said, you're going to continue that friendship. But how are you with friendships that come to an end? Well, you know me, I'm a talker. And sometimes I talk way too much um, because I know I've made you pull a few handfuls of hair out of your head. But um, I want to talk things out. Um, And if someone has a genuine gripe with me, I will do my best to make amends. And if they still need to move on and not maintain a close friendship, I have to be okay with that. Um, For me ending a friendship, it would be because someone betrayed my trust. And that to me is equally as important in in an intimate relationship. Um, For me, the foundation has to be something that's built on trust. So for me to walk away from a friendship is, is somebody undermine the trust in the friendship. That's for me. Um, what makes you sort of pick up the suitcase and walk away? Well, I think, you know, whether it be not, not just trust, but, you know, if there's some sort of someone's being harmed in a certain way, but I also, you know, I can take responsibility if it was something about me or this friend needed to end the friendship because of me, I will take full responsibility. We have to do that. So many people don't. A lot of people are so freaking delusional and thinking like, oh, you know, I'm playing the victim role and it's just all them. It's like, no, dude, just as in any relationship, it takes two. And you all have to take your responsibilities in nurturing the friendship and then also in the death of the friendship as well. Right. You know? You know, and if somebody ghosts you, there's probably a reason. And so for me, I don't... I don't allow it to sit with that and just go, oh, okay, they're not talking to me anymore. I will pick up a phone or I will show up in person and say, what's going on? And to me, because there's been experiences like this in my past where, you know, you, you hit that wall and it's like in a relationship, you have to be willing to push through it and to hear what somebody else has to say. And hopefully then that will deepen the friendship. If it doesn't, and let's say I did something that was, not acceptable for them, and they weren't able to move beyond it. Like you said, you have to take responsibility for it and go, okay, I totally understand this, and I'm sorry, and let it be what it is. But right. for me, I'm willing to push through, man. I will, I will, I'll, I'll bang my head against the wall until I knock it down. Um, that's just, that's just, you know, inherently who I am. Um, okay. Have you? Give me an example of a relationship that um, where it was unacceptable for you and you knew you had to walk away. Uh, of a friendship? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a friendship like that. Oh. That well, I've had to walk awesome. away from. Yeah. Cool. Um, like for me, addiction has been a couple of, it's reared its ugly okay. head a couple of times. Um, so that 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 was one where, you know, we talked, you mentioned toxic relationships. Yeah. Um, where for the betterment of both of you, you got to walk away. Right. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, again, the, a friendship is a lot of work. And as we're aging, we get really stuck in our ways and feel, you know, our way is the only way. And we get very lazy and we don't want to put all the work into it. But I think as we're aging in this gay community, we need to really get out there and like myself, put it, put yourself out there, but do the work because friendships are so freaking important to us. There's a reason why friendships yeah. are so important to gay men over 50. And let's talk about that right now. Like one of the reasons for us, men our age and older, we didn't have lives like the younger gays are having the acceptance. Most of us were not accepted by our families. Most of us had to flee our living environments and our worlds and 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 create their own family of friends, right? Um, so as we're aging, we don't have the luxury of having, oh, my children are going to take care of me, or my family's going to take care of me, or, oh, that nephew's going to come and he's going to change my diapers. We don't all have that. Um, which is why we need to lean on our friends as we're aging to be there for us. Without um, a doubt. And um, right? it's interesting because this conversation has 
sort of made me think of something about you because we have experienced different lives and we still do because you're married and I'm not. Um, so I have the ability to put myself in a lot of different social situations as a single man where those situations may not be readily available to you because you're married. Um, so yeah, you're making me see something that I didn't necessarily see before and that it might be a little bit more challenging and hopefully you could speak on this. Um, if you're married and is it, do you find, obviously we've discussed it, do you find it a little bit more challenging to make friends because your social circles are different? Well, I'm sure this has a lot. There's a lot to unpack. Yeah, there here. was a lot to um, unpack there. Sorry. <laughs> uh, first of all, everybody experiences this. When you meet the gay couple or any sort of couple, and there's always one you like and one you kind of like, or, you know, it's, it's very rare that you fall in love with both people, right? Um, so that's an issue that we all kind of find. But then, you know, that is compounded when it's like, okay, so you, I'm a package deal, right? right. I come along with this guy. Uh, so you like me, you got to like him. And if you like him, I'm coming with him. So you got to like me as well. So that does make things a little bit more difficult. And something that you single guys don't always understand is that it is a package deal. It's like, hey, Tom, you want to go to dinner? Sure. Let me ask my husband if he's available. It's like, wait a minute. I'm asking you. I'm like, oh, oh, um, well, you know what? We do pretty much everything together, so I'm going to ask him. Or, you know, there. obviously I don't do everything with my husband. Um, and I do have my friends that I I love going out to lunch all the time, you know. Uh, so I'm not dragging him to everything. But a lot of times single guys don't quite get that. And they're like, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be a part of this, like, package, you know. Uh, it's, it seems to kind of be difficult. Do you find that with, uh, couples that it can kind of be like, oh my God, why is it always? Yeah, actually, yes. Um, because yeah. sometimes, you know, fortunately I love both you and your husband equally. Um, so okay. it's for me, that situation isn't an issue with you guys, but in the past there have been situations where I click with one of the two. And the other one, we don't. And it's oil sure. and water. And so you want to maintain a friendship with the one, but the other one you could probably live without. And so yeah. that makes it really difficult ground to tread. Um, You're right. It's, I, yeah. It's so true. And which is kind of putting the onus on us, the couple. It's like, oh, okay, well, then I can't be friends with you. Or Yeah, because then it's, I'm asking you, it's like Sophie's Choice. I'm asking, and it's unfair yeah. to single folks to do that to you guys. Oh, exactly. And the thing is also, there are plenty of married couples or couples that do live separate lives. Uh, my husband and I have chosen not to do that, which is why we have this really strong, committed long-term relationship because we do put each other, you know, first above other people. Um, but there is always that kind of, oh, yeah, well, let me ask my husband. And I can see the eyes rolling, like, seriously? You have to ask his permission? I'm like, no, I don't have to ask his permission. I'm asking him if he wants to come. It's like, oh, he's coming too? Yeah, sorry. But then, you know, as I said earlier, with couples, there's always like the one that you like and then the other one that you don't like. We made uh, some new friends. Uh, actually, it was a friend that I made, uh, an activity friend that we discussed. And then it was like, oh, let's get together as couples. And we could just tell that that guy's husband didn't like us. Definitely didn't like me. And I think, you know, something else that you, I'm sure as a single guy, you find this as well, that level of competition. It's like, oh, I can't have you around because you're going to be competition to me. I'm like, I don't want to break up your marriage. Yeah. You know? And that's interesting because that's a dynamic that I've experienced in the past where the partner would think, oh, you're horning in on my turf and i'm like uh no because no. your turf is your turf i don't want to yeah you know i don't right. want to play in your backyard but i will enjoy hanging out with your husband um and 
Yeah, that's another, that's the opposite side of that coin. It's an interesting dynamic where I think both single people and married people uh, probably need to open their minds a little bit more and be a little bit more flexible. Because right. it is hard. Totally. It's been hard for me in the past where I do click with one and it is a package deal. And so what happens for me is I just tend to, you know, when I see them, I see them. And when I don't, I don't. I don't necessarily pursue it anymore if that's right. the situation. And that's probably, that's probably my bad. That's not a good thing because I might have deprived myself from a relationship that, uh, you know, could have been a long term thing in regard to friendship. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it, friendship is tough. And then when you add, you know, a, a spouse or a partner into the mix, it, it makes it even that much tougher. And right. we just have to. But again, friendships are so incredibly important to us because as we're aging, we're going to lose our spouses or our spouse is going to lose us. So we can't just be sitting there like, my my uh, story about my me coming along, be forewarned to all of you. Uh, so <laughs> m my f my parents were married forever. My mother died first. My father, it was as if his life ended. And we were like, dude, get out, go do things. And he just kind of sat there in this humongous house just waiting to die. Because first of all, she was the one who set the social world, right? So all of his plans were, came through her, and he had his work friends, but by then he was retiring. Something else that we, as we're aging, have to realize we're going to retire and leave our work friends. Um, and I, I say that to my husband all the time. If I go first, you cannot sit around. You have got to create these friends, important people that will you know, help you when you need it, will who will be here, you know, when you're incredibly sad after I die, because of course, he's going to be <laughs> devastated. Um, <clears throat> but it's important that even couple friends have those friends outside of the couple, because you never know what's going to happen. You know, um, you too, you as a single guy, as you're aging, you might get to that point where you need somebody to take you to your dialysis every week or you know whatever it yeah. is um we need our these friends it's really important to put the work into it and at this age before we're too old to be like wait a minute get up get out there and nurture those friendships that you have because you never know when you're going to need them right yeah and don't be, don't be afraid to cultivate new ones put yourself in an environment that might be uncomfortable and um Totally. Yeah. Uh, and I think, yeah, that goes for both single and married uh, couples to, is to make yourself a little uncomfortable for hopefully what will be, you know, uh, a, an amazing payday. Um, and that's bringing someone new into your life. Who will be there when you need them? Who will be there to comfort you? Who will be there to be, you know, at a boy, get up and do whatever you need to do? You know, we need that. Yeah. But, you know, something that's equally as fulfilling is to allow yourself to be there for somebody else as well. You know, well, that's, totally. that's hugely important, I think, to maintain our well-being and our sense of self. And that's, again, something I said at the very beginning about friendships. What you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. And we need to be there for each other. So you need to get up and be there for somebody else whether you like it or not, you know, um, it, again, it's just a lot of work, but it's the payday, as you said, is worth it. Yeah. And Having relationships, somebody there. Relationships are a lot of work, you know, regardless of whether it's oh. the intimate one or the friendship, they eat, yeah. they both, they're two different gardens, but they require the same maintenance, you know, and you gotta, you gotta get in there and get dirty. And I've got a chainsaw, so I'm going to go in and <laughs> cut you all down. <laughs> Get rid of those weeds, you know. Exactly. Yeesh. All right. So, friendships. Before we end it, I just want to, uh, first of all, tell everyone out there how much Michael and I really love doing this show. We love talking about all the things that are important to gay men as we're aging. And the thing is, though, that it wouldn't be possible with all of you out there for all of your show your support that you're giving to not only Michael and I, but also to our show. The show is 
basically free for all of you to listen to, and we are not getting paid to do it. But unfortunately, uh, there are a lot of production costs that you could help us kind of keep this show going because as we're getting the response from you guys, it's important to have these conversations. And one way that you can really help us all out is by joining our Patreon. Absolutely. And when you do join our Patreon, you will get exclusive access um, to bonus content like our Savage Side Eye and our Happy Gay Moment, um, access to video clips and bloopers that we're also going to be putting up there. And trust me when I tell you, there are a lot of them. Um, and you'll get early access to videos um, and our episodes as well. So, um, you know, join us over on Patreon and uh, become a part of our family in a different way. So please click the link in the episode description below and become a Patreon member today. So, Michael, friendships. So, Tom, yes. Important. Hugely They're very important. important. Hugely important. I think they, they, they nurture and help us become better people. And you really think that we old gay guys can keep making new friends? Is I it do, possible? It, it, I, I do. It just, it just happened, and it was such a lovely surprise for me. Um, so, yes, I do. I, and, you know, again, we have, we have to take responsibility and open a door. And seriously, folks out there, if it can happen to this bitter old queen <laughs> like Michael, it can happen to anybody. So get out there, put yourself out there, nurture all of your friendships. And, you know, like we keep saying, though, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Friendships are worth Push it. Push your boundaries just like you would in a relationship because friendships are relationships, people. They certainly are. And our relationship with all of you guys out there is one of the biggest pluses to doing this show. Michael and I love every comment that you are leaving for us. And please do that today. Leave us a comment. Tell us what your viewpoints of views of friendships are. Or, you know, how do you make new friends? Or are you just given up on friends. Um, let us know what you're thinking about. And if you really did like our video, make sure that you click like and subscribe. And wherever you're listening to us, leave us a five-star review. Because not only does that give our show a boost, but it also gets our show out there so that we are able to be found by other gay men over 50, and that they can also join our conversation. So, Michael, how else can people find us? How else can they send their comments and thoughts about friendships and every other thing else that we're talking about? You guys could always hit us up at no 2 about it at gmail.com. Um, and that's, remember the number two, and that's consistent across all social media. We are on Facebook and threads and TikTok and Instagram. So, Find us, ask us questions. You guys are doing it. Give us comments. It helps us It helps us grow. So reach out. We love, 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 love to hear from you. And a special thanks to our Patreon subscribers at our executive producer tier. People at this tier not only get early access to our episodes, but they also get all of our bonus uh, content as well. And we want to say a big thank you to both Ted Zalewski and Cesar Montiero for being so supportive to Michael and I and of our show. So that does it for this week, Michael. Thank you all for exploring friendships after 50. And as, as we have said, get out there and put the work into it because it is so worth it. So until next time, Michael. Until next time, Tom. Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you. 